This video is on quadra quadratic functions. We're going to be talking about vertex form. Vertex form will actually give you your vertex inside the equation. You just have to pull it out. So quadratic functions, again, the parent function is always y equals x squared. Vertex form looks very, very similar to what function notation is because the function notation tells you how the graph is transformed from the parent function of x squared and then how it's moved from the origin. And function notation uses the vertex as its key point. So function notation is very, very similar to vertex form. Not all quadratics will have x-intercepts, so we won't always have to find the x-intercepts. If they have them, that's great, but you always have to find your vertex and your you should always have your y-intercept. When you are going to graph from vertex form, you're actually going to graph five points like normal. You're going to have your vertex, and then because the vertex is in the middle of your graph, it gives you your axis of symmetry and everything, you're going to have two coordinates to the left of your vertex and then two coordinates to the right. One of the great things is that the two coordinates on the left will mirror the two coordinates on the right as long as you move them the same distance away from your vertex. So we're going to find the vertex first this time because of the way function notation works and the way vertex form is. We'll determine the min or max the same way we normally do. The axis symmetry still is from your vertex, so we'll actually already have that. And then we're really going to focus on what does the function notation tell us, and then how does this, how does the graph actually move? And then we'll have the domain and range like normal. <clears throat> so the first thing, our vertex, we want to find our vertex, is the h and k. So it's still that h and k. H is the opposite sign from parentheses because, again, it's X minus H. So if I wanted to have a positive, I'd have to have minus a negative H. So whatever that H value is, we're going to change that sign. But that K value, we're just going to keep it the same. So from here, our vertex, the negative 1 is where our H is at. So if we change that H value, it becomes a positive 1. So our vertex is at positive 1, comma, and then we keep that value of k, which is 2. So it's at positive 1, comma, 2. That's actually our vertex, and that's our key point. So if we put it back into function notation, it would look very similar to this. It just wouldn't have the squared on it. We're going to find our minimum or maximum the same way we always have. We have to find our a value. a is still in front of everything. It's the a parentheses. So the a is still a positive 1. So since it's positive, it's opening up, therefore it'll have a minimum. Our axis of symmetry, there's information in here. It's just the x value of your vertex. It always is. So there's no math that you have to do here because it already gives it to you. Our x value of our vertex is 1, so our axis of symmetry is x equals 1. You still have to put it as x equals 1. Now, because it's in vertex form and the function notation goes along with this very well, this is where we really start talking about how it is transformed. I've talked about it slightly already about how in quadratic basics and factored form and also in standard form. It's based off of your vertex. How is it moved from the origin? Because that's what we're doing, going from, from the origin. And then is it going to be reflected across the x-axis? And will it be a vertical stretch or compressed? So is it going to be more narrow or more wide? So from here, we determine which way it moves if we're going to go left and right and up and down. That is specifically from our vertex. So from the origin, from 0, 0, how does it get from 0, 0 to 1, 2? So from 0, 0 to 1, 2, we have to go right 1, and then we have to go up 2. So that is actually your transformation so far. So right one, and then up two. If h is positive, it's going to go right. If h is negative, it's going to go left. If k is positive, it's going to go up. If k is negative, it's going to go down. That's what this is saying. So it's from zero, zero. We want to go from zero, zero to get to this coordinate. Then the rest of this comes from the a value. Since a is not negative, there is no reflection. So I'm going to put there's no reflection. If a is greater than 1 
or if A is smaller than 1, then there will be a stretch or compress. But since A is actually equal to just 1, that means that there is no stretch or compress. No stretch or compression. Now it would be a vertical stretch or compress, but right now since there is none, I'm not even going to say, that, I'm just going to say that there's no stretch or compress. The domain is as normal, it's negative infinity to infinity. And then our range is still comes from our vertex. It's still uh, a minimum, so we have a minimum value, which is 2 because it's still the y value of our vertex. If we look at our comma, we have a positive a, means we're going to have a positive infinity, and then 2 is on the left. So again, it doesn't matter that the number is positive and on the left. That doesn't matter at all. What matters is that the infinity that is positive is, in fact, on the right. Now, for function notation, again, it's, it looks very similar to, to this, to vertex form. The difference is it's a f of x minus h parentheses plus k. The reason it doesn't have the squared is because function notation works for any function. And then we have to know what our parent graph is. That's why I put if f of x equals x squared. So now our function, we're using this. We know that our um, equation will end up turning into here. Our function notation will still be our a value is positive 1. We have f of x. We still have to use our vertex, so it's going to be x minus 1. And then plus k, which is plus 2. It's just plus 2. So right here, it looks almost identical to it, but instead of having the squared at the end of the parentheses, it has the f at the beginning of the parentheses. Because this is for any type of function, and now if this is function notation, and if the parent graph is x squared, I can rewrite it into this equation. Going from function notation into the equation. This is exactly how it will be re rewritten into the equation. On this next problem, we have f of x equals x squared plus 3. Now the difference here between these two is that there are no parentheses, but that does not mean that our h is just gone h, since there are no parentheses up here, h had a 1 in it. That's why the h value was 1. In here, the h value does not have a number there, so the value for that would be 0. The number inside the parentheses that x is added or subtracted to is 0. So really, our vertex is going to start at 0, comma, because there's no value added or subtracted to just the x, then the k value is 3. a is still a positive 1 on this one, so it is a opening up and it is a minimum. Your axis of symmetry still comes from the x value of your vertex, it's the h, so x is equal to 0. Now talking about our transformations here, to get from 0, 0 to 0, 3, we didn't have to go left or right. We just had to go up 3. So our transformation right now is up 3. Then the rest of it comes from your a value. So a is a positive, so there's no reflection. And a is 1. It's not bigger than 1. It's not smaller than 1. a is 1. That means that there is no stretch or compress. Our domain is still written the same way, negative infinity to infinity. And our range is the same. We have a minimum value at 3. So our, we had a positive a, so we're going to have a positive infinity. Move this so you can see it. Minimum value of 3. 
So we had an A of positive, so we're going to have positive infinity, and our value goes on the other side. So we have a closed bracket, 3 to positive infinity, open bracket. So for function notation, it's going to look, again, almost identical to the original problem. This one, if, if f of x is equal to x squared, we'll be able to rewrite it like that, given our function notation. 1 f of x is minus 0, but x minus 0 is just x. So I'm just going to keep x and close the parentheses, and then plus 3. Now, I will say this, I could, f of x is x squared, so if I could literally replace this with x squared, it would say 1 x squared plus 3. That's exactly what that says. This last one on here, again, we're going to do the same thing, the vertex, you're going to change the sign inside the parentheses, so it's going to be x, it's x plus 2. That's going to be a negative 2, comma. We're going to keep the k value on the outside, which is negative 3. a on this one is equal to, it's still on the outside right here, it's that negative 2. It's negative, so it's going to open down. It means we're going to have a maximum. Our axis of symmetry is the, still the x of our vertex, which is x equals negative 2. And now we need to talk about the transformations. So from, from the origin, from 0, 0, how do we get from negative 2 to ne and negative 3? So in order to go from 0, 0, we have to go left 2 and then down 3. It's just as if you were going to plot this coordinate, which direction do you go, and that's what you put here. Now the rest of it comes from the, your A. A is negative. Since A is negative, it reflects over the x-axis. So we put reflect over the x-axis. That's what the negative does. The A value of negative, that's what that does. Then A is 2. So we come up here. A is bigger than 1, so it's going to be a vertical stretch of what the value of A is. So it's going to be a vertical stretch of, we're not going to put of negative 2 because we've already used the negative. It's just a vertical stretch of the 2 because the 2 is what we're worried about. 2 is bigger than 1, so it's a vertical stretch of 2. That means it's going to go faster. So if it's a stretch, it's going to be more narrow because it's going to go quicker. Our domain is still negative infinity to infinity. And our range, it was a maximum, so we're going to have a max value at negative 3. So we have our comma. A was negative, so we're going to have a negative infinity. And then we have the value is at negative 3. Close at negative 3, open at negative infinity. Again, I, I've said this multiple times. The infinity matters on the sign. The sign has to, on the infinity, tells you where it goes. The sign on the number does not tell you where it goes. The sign on the infinity tells you if it's going to be on the left or the right of the comma. The number is just going to go in the next spot, in the other spot. So I can have a maximum value at a negative, it's just not going to cross the x-axis. Same thing here, I have a minimum value above the x-axis, means it's not going to cross the x-axis. So same thing here, will not cross the x-axis. None of these have x-intercepts, but they have a vertex and they do have a y-intercept. We can still find our y-intercepts by plugging in 0 into x and solving it, because that is still our y-intercept. So on this one, this last one, the function notation, so the last part of this, if f of x 
equals x squared. Our function notation is, again, a is negative 2 this time. f of x minus h, so we're going to put it back in here as plus 2, parentheses, and then minus 3. So from here, it looks almost identical. Again, the only difference is the squared is actually the f now. So that's really the only thing that changes.